uh, today we're here at our lane equestrian shooting and golf club i'm here with pro golfer tom buchanan hi danny how are you today fine you very good thank you yeah it's so nice the weather outside here and we're just enjoying the nice breeze but yeah we're not here for the weather we're here to speak to our friend tom here yeah great to have you obviously our lane equestrian shooting and golf club wonderful sports resort here in the middle of our lane very very blessed to, to work in such a fine place. Now Tom, can you quickly tell me, um, where did you grow up? So I was born and bred in uh, Stranra, South West Scotland. I stayed there until I was around um, 18, before moving on to uh, Dumfries, then Edinburgh and eventually here in our lane. But yeah, definitely a Stranra boy. Okay. What was your reason for leaving Scotland? So I mean, I left Scotland, um, uh, I would be 32, yeah. um, to move here for work. Okay. Um, I, I had a very good job in Edinburgh at Dunningston Golf Club, uh, working for the head professional Aston McLean. Um, and we both decided that, you know, to, to look at other options for me as, as a golfer. Uh, I was very fortunate to, to interview for the job here as operations manager of golf. Um, and came to do that role January 2012 um, and I've been here ever since. Tom, can you tell me how long have you been golfing? What, what age did you start golfing? I mean, I started golfing from a very young age. Um, I mean, my dad had a set of golf clubs that were in the garage um, behind my house. We had some sports fields and I'd go out there with my friends and just hit golf, golf balls and golf, you know, about the park. Then, you know, probably the age of 12, I really started to to take it up a bit more seriously, joined my first golf club, um, and then from there on, you know, really got into. You know, I was very fortunate. Uh, come from a small town like Stranra, I had lots of people there who would guide me and help me um, to to become, you know, the golfer that I am today. So, would you say that you had like a mentor that helped you with your golfing training and everything as, as a young person? I had, I had lots of people who gave me good good input. Um, you know, I had a guy up the road from me, Neil Campbell, who's no longer with us, sadly, but I mean, Neil was, any time I was out golfing in the park behind the house, he would jump the wall and, and come and help me. And then I always, when I started to play golf at, at the golf clubs, I always tried to play with better players. Yeah. That way I could learn from them. And, you know, some, some of these guys were, were instrumental in, in making me, the, you know, into the, the golfer and the player I became. Big question, how do you balance your career as a golfer, but also as a golfing manager at the golf club. Oh, it's difficult now. Obviously, you know, when I first arrived, I was only operation manager in the golf course, so I had time to play and you know, played been a tour for three years. I was fortunate to get started the Asian tour, then fortunate enough to get started the European tour, and that was wonderful. Now, in my role since January uh, 2019, where I now look after the whole resort, it becomes very difficult to actually find the time to, to practice and compete at the high level that, that I did in the past. I still enjoy it. I still uh, we play with the members. We you know we have more social golf now than serious. Um, just because time doesn't allow me to put in the full effort that I did in the past. But you know what? I am very fortunate. So you know I have I had had the experience of one European tour start which millions of people in the world will never have. Um, I work in an unbelievable resort with unbelievable people. So, you know, for me, I will always be grateful for that. Now, Tom, if we can ask you another question is, what do you see as your life purpose? Is it golfing? No, oh, I mean, I, I very much see, I very much myself see now in the customer service industry, you know, trying to, to make, you know, the resort here, all of our clubs, a place that people want to come, you know, a place where people can come and be happy and relaxed and enjoy our wonderful facilities. So, yeah, I mean, in the past, I probably saw it differently. You know, when I was playing a lot of golf, maybe I could have just gone and played golf. Or, but you know what? Now, in, in the role and, and here at the club, I definitely see it as building a, you know, a, a great facility, great services, and keeping people happy. Not always possible. <laughs> However, you know the staff that we have here definitely go out of their way to try and make every customer, every member feel that extra bit special. That's important, you know. You can always 
you can't get enough of good customer service. So. Massive. Customer service is everything. At the end of the day, we're all customers, whether we're here or whether we're out and about. If we have bad customer service, we don't go back. Yeah. So it's important, and the team here have really bought into that, that if we give the customer service, customers will keep returning to us. Our product is good, our facilities are, are, are amazing. We have it all. So as long as our customer service matches that, we will keep people coming through the park. And that's probably, this could be a difficult question. Do you see your golfing as skills that you have acquired through learning and practicing, or is it something as a natural gift that you that maybe grew up with, born with? It's probably a bit of both. You know, everybody has to have a natural ability. You know, you can be taught the best possible way in the world by anybody, but you have to have a natural ability to go with that. Um, I've always been into sports, I've played lots of sports at, at different levels. Um, so, yes, to start with, probably there was a lot of natural ability there, even if I'm maybe being a little overconfident there, there was a lot of natural ability. And then it just got fine-tuned by, by prof other professionals, by teachers, by people like that, who again bring, that, bring their input into your natural ability and make it something bigger. So yeah, you have to have both. You can't, I don't think you can be purely taught a skill. You have to have an element of natural ability, first of all. That's for sure. Because, for sure. yeah, people who don't have that natural ability, especially in games like golf, where the fine lines are, are so small, if you don't have that natural ability, it's, sadly, it will never work, even with the best teaching in the world. They say I don't. <laughs> I'll, I'll never be a pro golfer. <laughs> well, I haven't seen you yet in the driving range, Danny, but I'm sure we can have a look. And I'll give you an honest opinion. You can just ask the, the load up on, on, from Ruan. He will tell you. I took out your grass that day. <laughs> you didn't have to need a lawnmower. So. <laughs> but no, I, yeah, I mean it's it's it has to be a company. It has to. There is, and it's the same. You can have lots of natural ability. Yeah. But if you don't have someone giving input all the time, then you, the, the climb won't be as continual. The, we always learn. Every yeah. day we learn something new. So in any sport, to say, top top footballers are coached every day. You know, it's not like they play on a Saturday and come back the following Saturday. They're coached every day. So they have natural ability, but they're also learning all the time. They're learning shape, they're learning defense, the learning attack, where they want to be. So it's a it's a continual learning curve. If you've never tried it or you want to improve, come down to the golf club here at Alley and Equestrian Shooting and Golf Club. Three professionals, why not give us a try? See you soon.